Welcome to another Remix Single. We are going to talk about single button forms. This freaks people out when they come to Remix. We're very used to putting a click handler on a button and then performing a fetch on our own. Um, but in Remix, uh, you learn that actions are modeled as, uh, as, as forms in HTML. And so you might think, oh, but what if I just have like a delete button or just a checkbox or a drop down that just changes status or something like that? That can still be modeled as a form. So I'm going to put a, a form on here uh, to delete uh, some records in this little app that we've got going on. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is add the form. So here we go, form. I'm going to put some style on it. Um, display in line. And then uh, method is going to be post. And in here, we definitely have a button. Type equals submit. And we will say, let's put a, let's put a times in there to delete it. But I don't want the screen reader to say times when they focus that thing. So I'm going to put aria label that says delete here. Now, a question that always comes up here is, all right, you've got this form here, and you've got this form here, and Remix will post to this route. I mean, we could post to a different route if we put an action on here, like, uh, I don't know, create person or something like that. But I, I, this, this is all personal preference. I really enjoy um, this UI having all of the, all the posts happening, or, or at least branching in this action. I, I like that they all come here so I can see, you know what? What are the features of this app? What can I do in here? But um, you can post to a different route if you want to. But this is a question that comes up a lot, is how do I um, handle two different forms? And in our case, we've got seven forms when you have all these people. Uh, how do you handle all of that in just one action? Um, so HTML is how. <laughs> this, is, this is gonna be a little bit nutty for you, for, for a lot of people anyway. Uh, buttons believe it or not, can have a name, I'm going to call it action, and a value, create. Buttons are form inputs. They can send values too. And then in this button, I'm going to say your name is action, and your value is delete. So I've got to come up here into my action and branch on that now. So I've got these values. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, pluck off the action and then keep all the rest of the values. And now, you know, I'm going to move that up just to get it out of the way. Kind of the flow of what, the way I think about it. Now I can say if, or I could use a switch, like at this point, like do whatever you want. But I'm just going to use if else right now. If action equals create, that's when we do this. If action equals delete, now we are ready to handle this. But there's, there's a problem here. We, we not only do we need to figure out which action are we going to handle, uh, we've got to figure out which person are we deleting from the list. Um, this is a little unintuitive to people who've been doing web development for just the last few years. Uh, it's, it's an old thing for people who've been doing it you know, decades ago, and it feels a little bit funny to bring this back, but input type hidden. So there's no visual display of this input. And we say the value of this thing is, or let's do the name first. The name is ID, and the value is person.id. Um, I think I, because of the way that my database works, the way that it keys things, we need another one in here uh, for person created at because I can actually it's anyway it's a dynamo DB thing uh, that we're not going to get into all right so I can send both of these things as hidden input so once again it's like a it's a description I don't like how close that is ah yeah that's better so this form let's clean that up too so this form right here is a, a description of a mutation it's a declarative mutation all the event handlers, though, are handled by the browser and by Remix. So now I've got this setup to send um, the name of the action. 
on the button right here so I can know which uh, thing I'm trying to do. And then I can do these hidden inputs to send the information. Um, don't stress out about this action, but if you're going to use this pattern in your code, always make sure you do an underscore. You can't say action. This is a, a weird decision on the DOM where when you have a form element and you have dot action, um, it like breaks everything because you can have form action, but also all of the values, like this name ID is form L dot ID, which is also terrible. So they, Anyway, this is what happens when we don't break the web, and that's really cool. So weird decisions a long time ago. So just make sure that when you use this pattern, your name is underscore action. Or come up with something else like do or perform or I don't know, but I just go with action. Oh, I made a big mistake here. These are both named ID. This one needs to be created at. All right. So now let's head up here back into our action. And when we click one of these buttons, delete, we want to I'll just say return db people delete. And I'm going to pass it the values. So I've already already dealt with I've already dealt with pulling the form data out, right? So I've already got it. And so I'll save this. Let's go see how it works out. Oh. Nuke myself first. Here we go. I hope it works. Woo! <laughs> See that? Okay. Once again, Remix automatically keeps your UI and your backend data in sync with each other. If you watched the last video on actions, uh, this is, oh my gosh, I still think it's so cool. Um, I got my grandpa twice here so we can pull him off of there. Hmm? Kind of cool. Remix manages all that stuff for us. And if I click the super fast, bah, 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 look at what Remix is doing in the background. It makes sure to cancel all those fetches and then only process the last one. This is what your code doesn't do. I, well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't assume so much, but I've seen what everybody does. <laughs> and nobody handles this. Um, I don't. Like, when I'm not in Remix, I'm like, I'm not setting up an abort controller and passing the controller dot signal to every single one of my fetches. Like, pain in the neck. I just, I just don't do it. Um, and so when we were building Remix, we realized, oh, dang, we can, we can do this for everybody and every app because we manage that connection with the, the server. Uh, we talk about this all the, all the time in Remix that we're just emulating what the browser does. So like, why did we decide to do this? Or how, how did we know that this would work, right? This isn't just us thinking up some crazy idea as we love to do if we disable JavaScript. And once again, this has nothing to do with disabling JavaScript. The point of this is not to make it work without JavaScript. The point of this is to show that it's, it's built on uh, like um, core features of the web, of like web standards. So if we look at what does the browser do in this situation if I click this button really fast? Bop, 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 bop. The browser did that, not Remix, not me, not my code, the browser. Bop, 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 bop. <laughs> All right, so that is, uh, that's how you handle multiple actions with one uh, action function in a route, um, and uh, how you can have multiple forms on the page, and single button forms, uh, which are kind of new ideas. Um, now, there's a little bit of like architectural conversation you might want to have here. I personally don't do my database interactions in my route action. I'll usually move this stuff out to a different module, and, uh, and then I'll just say like return, um, like uh, create, person or something like that and pass the values in and get rid of the database stuff. And then here, instead of db.people delete, this one's nice and simple, but I'd probably still wrap DynamoDB um, like this. And so then I could make, I might make different decisions on my backend later. And I also just like how this code cleans up. I view this action as a way to say, okay, I'm, out, I'm at this route, I'm at this UI, you're posting something, you wanna change data. 
if you're familiar with backend frameworks, this is kind of like a controller and you kind of decide, all right, where are we gonna send this request? What code do we wanna send this to? Sometimes people really wanna do that part with their routes and that's fine too. You can totally do that, post to a totally different route. As a personal preference, I like to post to the route that the UI lives in. It just helps me like when I'm debugging an app, I'm like, all right, what route is this? All right, I can go to this action that I know uh, uh, the, these are all the features of the app. And then I share code in these functions. So I may have multiple routes that call create person, um, but that's how I share the code is in the module. But again, I'm just talking about my own personal preferences. You can post to different routes. I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed it.